a few months ago, I got an email from a chap called Andy at a place called Speakenzy Labs, or Speakenzy Labs, I'm not too sure which. He asked me if I wanted to review his solder time watch. He said he'd send one over and I could either have the kit or the assemble watch. Well, of course, I asked for the kit because I thought it'd be interesting to try and put one of these things together. Anyway, it never turned up, but I don't blame you for that, Andy, because if I had a room full of the things that people promised to send me that never arrived, I'd have an empty room. But anyway, I ordered one myself and here it is. So over the course of the next six minutes or so, I'm going to attempt to assemble the solder time watch. And yes, I pronounce it solder as we do in the UK. The Americans say solder, but I like to use the L since someone took the time to put it in there. Right, let's have a look at the components. Here they are. I'm no electrical genius, but I'll be able to figure this out, I'm quite sure. I know that this is a circuit board. It's quite nicely printed as well. And I've got one of these clamp things because I'll need that to hold it together when I'm soldering it. It's better having three hands than two when you're doing things like this. Let's have a look at the components. Here are three resistors and there's presumably capacitors, I think. Uh, let's have a look. There's some chips. I can spot those a mile off. This thing is a little tiny switch. Fascinating. This is the battery holder. This tiny thing here is the timing crystal, which you've got to be careful you don't lose because it is very small. And this is the, I suppose, what would you call it? The clock face itself or the uh, LED digits. But anyway, that's what it is. Right, so let's start putting these things together. But first off, we need to print out the instructions from the internet. Uh, from the Spikenzi Labs website, you get these nice step-by-step -step instructions with photos and even an idiot like me can follow them. The tools you'll need will be a soldering iron with an L in it, some solder and some clippers to clip the back off the components to make sure it's all flush. And it's quite handy to have some masking tape around as well to hold things together whilst you're assembling them. Right, so let's get this thing kicked off. The first job that I've got is to bend the legs of the three resistors and insert them into the circuit board like this. Those resistors can go in any of those three holes and they can go any way round. It doesn't matter. It makes the whole thing rather idiot proof and easy for someone like me who's not really familiar with electrical components. And then you just snip the backs off them like that and try to get them as flush as you can to the circuit board. Right, we're off and running now, so now I'll put the timing crystal in. Now you'll notice throughout this that my soldering technique isn't particularly brilliant. It's just about passable. So if you were thinking of writing in to tell me how bad I am at soldering, I know I'm bad, I'm an amateur. And of course, in a way, that's the whole point of this video. We're trying to find out whether an amateur like myself is capable of putting together the solder time. So we'll carry on now. First thing is the smaller of the two chips. I'll take that down so it stays in place when I flip it over and then just solder the legs one after the other. As I go along, my technique's getting a little bit better and a little bit quicker, but I do get the odd hiccup every now and then when I sort of solder something either too long or not long enough. But as you can see, I'm getting along quite fine now. Some people might be put off by the idea of soldering chips in, but it's no more difficult than any other electrical component. And talking of components, here's two more. It's the capacitors I'm dropping in either side of the chips there. And then we're just soldering those legs on and snipping them off. This is the LED module, which just slides in again into the holes. Tape it down, flip it over and solder the legs in just like we did with the chips. And then snip off all the protruding legs. And then peel the film off the LED module and attach the switch here, soldering that in place. And the hardest bit, perhaps, is the battery module. Or it reckons it's the hardest because it slides around a lot. But once you've got one side of it soldered in, you'll be all right. It'll go in quite fine. Right, it's the moment of truth. Let's find out if this was uh, a complete failure. And no, there we go, 12 o'clock. That's what it's supposed to do when you first power it up. Brilliant. So now to carry on assembling the rest of the watch. We've got these um, plastic parts here that we need to uh, get this protective blue plastic film off. So you just peel those off both sides. You've got to be careful with some of these because they are quite thin items. And if you uh, pull them wrong, you might snap them off. And then you're completely screwed. But we've got them all off and we're going to put the watch together like a sandwich. So there's the bottom bit, then the clock module. This goes around the outside. And eventually you're left with this kind of hockey puck of a thing. Uh, let's just have a look at it. And I've uh, done something wrong here. As you can see, it's it's got a bit of a kind of bulge in there, so it doesn't fit properly. And that's because I didn't trim all these components down 
uh, enough. So I opened it back up again, trimmed every last leg off that I possibly could, and assembled it back together again. And this time it fits perfectly, nice and snug. So that was just uh, my error. Right, now we'll put the screws in this. Now they do say that you can use this thing, you don't have to use it as a, a watch, you can use it as a pocket watch rather than a wrist watch or as a clock, but I'm going to use it as a proper wrist watch uh, like it was uh, designed for. Now I'm putting the Velcro strap in here. I found out actually later on I was putting this strap the wrong way around. I put the scratchy side to my wrist which was rather annoying and of course I swapped that around later on after I did the video. But you tap the button and the time comes on for five seconds and switches off again. And that's pretty much all it does. To set the time, you tap the button, then tap it again, wait for the colon to flash, and it starts moving forward in time. Quicker than normal, of course. And if you hold it down, it goes really fast, so you can get to the right time. But look what happens, go past 12 o'clock, and it's back round to 1. So it's only a 12-hour clock. I would have preferred a 24-hour clock, I think. Apparently you can program the pick chip, but that's well beyond my capabilities. So there you go, that is the solder time watch. As you can see next to my Nixie watch here, it's a pretty massive device, but I actually think it looks rather cool, but I don't know if I could really carry this look off in public. What do you think? Would you want to be uh, seen wearing that? Maybe at some sort of geeky convention, but probably not to a wedding or something. But if you think you can carry it off, it's quite a good thing to put together. I found it entertaining, to be honest, and it uh, made me feel a little bit better about my soldering skills by the end of it, and I wasn't a complete loser. So if you want to get hold of one of these, uh, spikenzilabs.com, the details are on the screen there. I'd suggest getting the non-assembled one and putting it together yourself. It's more fun that way. Anyway, all that remains for me now is to say thanks for watching.